Can you spare a few minutes to talk about spare parts for your AR? Well, I sure can. Spare parts for your AR is actually a viewer request. It was a question that was on our QA episode. That show is at the end of every month where we answer your questions. If you want to see your question get on the show, go ahead and send us an email to the email address down below. Uh, a lot of great questions come there and they also turn into their own videos like this one, which is spare parts for your AR. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes with me checking out this video and hopefully you want to learn a little bit more about what spare parts to carry for your AR platform. Now, I also did get some comments that they did not appreciate puns, dad jokes, bad impressions, whatever, but guess what? I'm doing them in every video from here on out. This could apply if you're a three gunner and you're you know doing a lot more competitions, you're traveling, you want to have a setup, some spare repair parts. You could be going to classes, a very serious student where you're spending time and money and you're traveling to go to training and you don't wanna have the gun break down or if it does, you wanna be able to fix it. You could just be a serious marksman or shooter and you just want to have spare parts. So if you go to the range, you have parts to fix it. Now, back in the day when I used to be a serious three gun shooter, uh, I was very fortunate. I was sponsored by a factory, a great company that I got to travel around the country shooting three gun matches. So my spare parts kit for my three gun rifle was another rifle. Uh, this was for a variety of reasons. Number one, I didn't want a rifle issue to ruin my match, which it never did. Uh, so I had that insurance of having a spare rifle. Number two, I wanted to be able to support the customers of our rifles that if they had an issue, I could give them a rifle to use. But number three, to be a good steward of the sport, a good ambassador of the sport, no matter if they shot my rifle company, you know, the company that I shot for or not, if they had an issue, I had no problem handing them this spare AR. And I did that on more than a few occasions just to help people out. I didn't want to see their match get ruined. So obviously the best spare parts kit is a separate rifle, um, but we're gonna talk about kind of good, better, and best spare parts. Now, when I used to travel, I used to carry a uh, kit like this with all sorts of different AR parts, pistol parts, holster parts, mag pouch parts, all sorts of different things, things that I would really need if something were to come loose, go bad, whatever, I could repair it in the field, plus I'd carry a tool kit. Now here in the shop, I have all of these parts kits, but that's because I'm a gunsmith, I'm an armorer, I do that kind of work, so I need to have parts on hand. I don't expect everyone to carry that. So what kit should you have? What parts should you carry? First things first is actually not a part at all, but lube. I'm serious. The most important thing that you can probably have in your range bag is gun lube, a good quality gun lube. I would say 97.452% of the malfunctions that I saw or stoppages with the AR were lube related. Generally not enough lube or no lube at all or crappy lube. So having a good quality gun lube, I keep it in these uh, centrifuge containers, needle oilers from Brownells, centrifuge container, holds it all really well. It protects the needle, it's durable, it fits in a mag, you know, caddy in various range bags or inserts. I did do a video on these a long time ago, I'll put a, post a link up there, a quick tip video. But gun lube, seriously, number one thing. It'll fix a lot of issues with the AR, you'd be surprised. Second thing, you should have a lot of magazines. Uh, magazines are a perishable item. Feed lips break, they get dropped, they get broken, springs wear out or whatever. And you should also be labeling and numbering your magazines, okay? These are perishable, don't get attached. If they break, if they are not working, if all of a sudden you notice you're having stoppages every time you put magazine number three in, that is a clue, okay? Get rid of magazine number three, replace it, break it so it doesn't get confused. If you wanna keep it as a dedicated trading magazine, wrap it in like some bright duct tape or something, but it should not be considered a primary magazine. So have a lot of magazines, buy them cheap, stack them deep, they're good to have, and they just plain, uh, are a necessity, okay? You can't debate that. Now, as far as spare parts, I'm gonna kinda start with the upper, then go to the lower, and I'm gonna kinda maybe bounce around just a little bit as far as like good, better, best, but what can your budget allow? That's the other part of this. I don't expect everybody to have a Gucci spare parts kit. 
You might have to kind of start basic and build your way up, or maybe you look at buying lesser expensive parts for your spare parts. If you have a really nice rifle with a $150 bolt carrier in it, well, maybe you look at the bargain $75, $80 bolt carrier group as your spare parts kit. It's like the donut spare tire of your AR. It might not need to be the best if it's just gonna ride in your spare parts kit. That being said, let's get right to it. Uh, small parts. There's a few different small parts that don't take up a lot of space and are not super expensive. First one being gas rings. Gas rings are easy to do some function checks. I actually had a video a while ago about gas rings. I'm gonna have a lot of these cards up here, I have a feeling, but the gas rings are good to carry. Each bolt needs three of them, so it carry multiples of three. Sometimes they break, sometimes they wear out, and the gas rings go in the groove right here on the bolt. I actually took these rings off of this bolt to kind of show you. So gas rings are a good one to have. Keep them in a bag so you don't lose them. Uh, next would probably be an extractor because these do wear out if they do have issues. This little uh, tooth or blade, if you will, can wear out and that can cause the rounds, the empty rounds to be left in the gun. You having failed to extracts, and that's a problem. So it could be the extractor itself or it could be the spring, the insert, and then an O-ring. So the spring goes, actually the insert goes inside the spring, the spring goes in here, the O-ring goes around the spring. The spring obviously gives it tension, the insert gives it more tension, the O-ring gives it even more tension, so we have a lot of spring tension grabbing those empty rounds. And then that extractor obviously rides right here on the bolt. So we wanna make sure that we have extractor parts. Relatively inexpensive, easy to get, don't take up a lot of room, so I would consider this part of your good mandatory kit. So we have gas rings, and then we have some extractor parts. Other small parts, cam pin. Cam pins can break, they can wear down. Just a good part to have, doesn't take up a lot of room, relatively inexpensive. Uh, speaking of that, if we were to break a bolt, the most common spot to break the bolt is right here where the cam pin hole is. So it's a good idea to have a cam pin. It's actually a good idea to have a bolt, which is next, but we'll talk about that in a second. Firing pin. Firing pins can chip, they can crack, they can break. Not a bad idea to have a firing pin. And if you're gonna have a firing pin, I would highly recommend having one or two firing pin retaining pins. This is easy to lose in the field, and believe it or not, this is a very vital part. If this gets lost, the AR does not run very well at all. In fact, sometimes it just stops because the firing pin will fall out of the carrier and it'll get all uh, wrapped up in your hammer, it'll have a stoppage. It's actually kind of one of the most fragile parts, if you will, and easy to lose parts, but it's also one of the most critical. So I'd recommend having a few of these. So that is kind of, in my opinion, upper parts that's the good parts to have. Those should be mandatory parts. Now I get people who ask me, should I carry a spare dust cover, a dust cover spring? Nope, I don't care if the upper doesn't have a dust cover, doesn't need it to run. What about forward assist? Again, doesn't need it to run. I've seen crappy uppers shoot their forward assist right off. Uh, generally the roll pin hole was out of spec, out of location, didn't hold the forward assist very well. Doesn't need a forward assist or a dust cover. Okay, so as long as the upper receiver can hold the charging handle so it can function, hold the bolt carrier so it can function and hold the barrel in place and hand guard, that's doing its job. Those are the critical functions, so I'm not worried about the other stuff. So let's talk about our next upgrade. And if we had a better parts kit, it would probably be a complete bolt assembly with the firing pin and retaining pin, of course. But this has an extractor. It has all the extractor parts. It has an ejector. Uh, you could easily kind of carry this, and this would have your parts. Now, the bolt is gonna cost you a little bit more money for a good quality complete bolt, but it definitely is the next step up in having a good quality spare part. Now, the best, speaking of upper and all these other parts, would be a complete bolt carrier group. It has everything, it's all together. It has the bolt, all the parts that we've talked about, the cam pin, the carrier. Uh, it has the firing pin, the firing pin retaining pin. If you had an issue, you could use this to troubleshoot. It's set, but not everybody has the extra money to have a complete bolt carrier group. If you do, great. If you have an old one, maybe you upgraded bolt carrier groups or something like that, you can go ahead and throw this one in there. So something to consider is a complete bolt carrier group. Now, as far as other uh, upper parts, 
Yeah, I've had people carry spare charging handles. Not a bad idea. Sometimes they get damaged. Although with the newer quality charging handles like the Voltors, the Rainier, um, the Radians, and there's other ones that I'm not mentioning. Oh, Geisleys, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting some. But with good quality charging handles, I'm seeing a lot less charging handle issues than when we were adding aftermarket latches to USGI charging handles. So thankfully that has really kind of cleared up nicely. So that is upper parts. And again, you can carry all these in like little bags. You can label 308, you can do whatever. You can keep parts in the little kit that they come with when you get them from the parts store. No problems there. So let's talk about lower parts. Uh, one of the parts I think is absolutely vital is the mag catch. Believe it or not, this little part right here, if this cracks or breaks and it doesn't hold the magazine in place, you have a crappy functioning gun. Yeah, you can hold the mag in there, which I've seen people do. They had to hold the mag in place, but this is an easy part to acquire. It's relatively inexpensive and you can keep it assembled as I have here with the button, the spring, and the catch. And then if something were to happen to any one of them, you could have this in your kit and you could easily replace it. You don't even need any tools to do this. Uh, if you have like a pen or even a bullet for that matter, you can replace the mag catch. So something that's really good to have. Bolt catch, bolt release. Technically it's not critical. So I don't necessarily say you need to have one in your spare parts kit. Uh, I don't care as long as the gun feeds and fires and extracts and ejects. I don't care if it holds the bolt open on an empty mag and I don't necessarily need it to manipulate. I could use the charging handle, so I don't carry a bolt catch, bolt release in those parts if something were to happen to that. Although thankfully, good quality stuff that doesn't break. Although I have seen bolt catches break, so I shouldn't say that I haven't, but use a good quality bolt catch, good quality lower parts kit. My favorite one right now is the Geisley Maritime Catch. It's, I just like it the best. But let's uh, kind of move forward. Pins. I have seen these pins break. When they break, it could cause your gun to go full auto. Uh, it could cause the gun to cease, just not be able to fire, not be able to reset, hammer not to fall, whatever. So hammer trigger pins are a good thing to have with you. However, I want you guys to be able to see that these pins, even though they look similar, they're actually three different pins. This one has grooves on the left and the right. There's no center groove. So that means that is only a trigger pin. So after we install it into the trigger, the legs of the hammer spring would rest in here and keep the trigger pin from moving out. So this can only be used as a trigger pin. If we were to use it in the hammer, if it goes inside here, there's a spring that runs here, that needs to engage on a center notch and this pin does not have it. This pin has a center notch and then a notch on the edge. So it would either work just fine in the hammer, or it would also work just fine as a trigger pin. This pin actually has three grooves, one here, here, and there, so it can either be used here, or it can go in here. So make sure, if you're gonna get spare pins, make sure they have a center groove and at least one groove on the outside. That's ideal, so do that. If you have a trigger that uses an anti-walk trigger pin or hammer pin, carry spares of these. Hopefully these are secured with the appropriate thread locker. I do have a video on thread locking compounds. I'll put a link up there. These little screws love to come off. And then once they do, there's no groove. So these pins love to come out. That's bad. So we wanna make sure we're keeping an eye on that, okay? That being said, all the other proprietary little parts, like if you have threaded bolt catch pins, stuff like that, all that stuff should be thread locked as well. Carry spares of these, good cheap insurance. Speaking of fire controls, uh, I still carry a mil-spec fire control group with pins. And I kind of put it all together. If your race whiz-bang trigger goes down at a match, big deal. Uh, you put a new mil-spec trigger in, and yeah, it's a mil-spec trigger, so it's not quite as nice as what you're used to, but it'll get you through the match, and generally it's pretty reliable. Uh, at a minimum, if you are running a mil-spec trigger, you should be carrying some springs with. Not a bad idea, okay? You can change out springs, generally speaking, with a punch. You can push out hammer, you can try to get the uh, trigger out. Sometimes you might need to remove the grip to remove the safety. Um, yeah, it kind of depends, so you might need a screwdriver depending on your gun, but not a bad idea to have springs and maybe even a fire control group is kind of a, a good and better. And if you really wanted the best, you would have even your spare race trigger or maybe even a spare lower receiver. So speaking of lower receiver to wind that out uh, is springs and detents. And there's two types that I'm showing you here. 
This one is the safety detent and spring. This one is the takedown pin detent and spring. These you're probably not going to run into in the field very often because you're not really taking those things apart, at least I hope you're not. But the reality is if you're building in the shop, if you're taking down your lower, whatever, these are easy to lose. So these are nice to have as spares as well, just because you might lose something. Now, other parts of the lower, the buffer retainer spring. Um, again, if you're not taking the tube off, you're probably not going to lose it. If you are taking the tube off and you think you're going to lose it, number one, wear eye protection because it loves to come shooting out at you. But maybe it's something you keep as well. So. That is kind of my thoughts on spare parts. Now, the other thing to consider is get to know your gun. For me, with my three gun rifle here, it uses proprietary trigger and hammer pins. It uses a proprietary bolt catch. If I had to say there's one downside with having a super high-end, cool billet receiver set is sometimes the proprietary parts are harder to get. I can't go to any old gun shop, even an AR shop, and probably find these. So I want to actually keep some spares on hand, uh, but that's just, you know, kind of the downside of running proprietary stuff. If you have a proprietary rail system that uses unique screws or an optic mount, something like that, those things might not be bad to have you know, in your kit. Kind of think ahead of like, hey, would it really suck if I lost this? And if the answer is yes, then maybe consider having a spare part. So that is my thoughts on spare AR-15 parts. I hope you guys thought it was helpful. If you did, let me know, give me that thumbs up. If you wanna share it, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna subscribe, if you're not a subscriber, welcome. Please subscribe, I'd love to see the channel grow. And if you guys have any comments, please leave them in the you know, comment section below if you have any suggestions. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help out. I wanna share knowledge. So go ahead and send me an email to the email address shown below. That's the QA at gunsandtactics.com. Best way to get your questions to me. We answer those questions end of the month. Otherwise, like I said, we do videos on them often if they're a good question, but I need your help. So please sound off. Let me know what you guys think. I hope everyone's doing well. You're staying safe, you're staying healthy. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.